All right. Well, welcome to the Health is Wealth podcast. This is episode number nine. If you're new to the show, welcome. I'm grateful to have you here. Please hit that subscribe button. We have new episodes coming out each and every week with amazing people who are just impacting this world for the better. In this episode, I speak with Petia Kolobova, who is a powerhouse rock star female entrepreneur who's changing the lives of many women, teaching them how to love themselves, teaching them how to meditate, how to create more self-awareness. And we go deep in this conversation. She talks about, she gets really vulnerable with us and she speaks about when she was depressed and when she attempted to commit suicide and how it just impacted her life and what she came across who she came across, which she performed an exercise and it just changed her life. And uh, I challenge you to listen to this whole episode, try this epi- this uh, exercise out and enjoy the episode. Okay, I'm here with Petia Kolobova, who is a woman's life coach, a mind, body and soul transformation guide, meditation teacher, fitness and wellness expert, a body love advocate, and lifestyle entrepreneur. She walks women through a proven system that allows them to create a life that fulfills on the inside, not just one that looks good on the outside. She is the founder of Be Strong Minded, a meditation teacher and a fitness and confidence coach. (laughs) Petia, that's such an awesome description of somebody. I'm so honored and grateful. Welcome to the Health is Wealth podcast. Thank you so much. I'm super grateful to be here with you because I had the honor to interview you on my podcast and it was such a ride. I'm like, wow, let's keep going. (laughs) That was fun. I'm actually pumped up from that interview. So I'm I'm glad we're using that energy and transferring it into this one. Uh, I want to start with, with one thing. You teach women how to love themselves, how to create a powerful life. Uh, as we talked about on your podcast, love and gratitude, so important. I, w- I would love, no pun intended, I would love to hear how you teach others to love themselves, to really start on the inside. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing is that I, um, it took me years to find out that what truly, truly lo- matters, it's the self-love. Because I feel like the whole of my life, I was looking for love. I was looking for fulfillment, you know, like I was born and planned. My mom was 17, you know, and it was her first experience and here's a baby. So I feel like my whole life, I was looking for being validated on the outside. And when we look for the validation of the outside, for the approval, for the love, we feel even more emptiness. And this emptiness inside of me, I was trying to fill with numbing, with food, with overspending money, with being in toxic relationship, because I didn't love myself. And uh, all of this turmoil led me to be struggling with an eating disorder. And so I was binging and purging and I truly was at a point that I really hated myself. I hated my body. I attempted of suicide. And uh, I think it got even stronger when I moved from Europe here to United States because I feel even more isolation. I feel like I don't belong. And um, one of those nights, like when everything is quiet, when you stop being busy, you just find yourself just alone with your own thoughts. And they were not pretty. <laughs> they were actually pretty critical. Like, who do you think you are? Like, you don't even belong here. Like, why are you trying to just go through the motions? And what's the reason to even like waking up in the morning? It's going to be the same. And in that moment, I realized I'm like, wow, if I keep going this way, like, I will again have that urge to not be here because there was no reason for me to be here. I'm alone here. No family. Friends were very superficial because those were the people that I was attracting because I thought that that's the only thing I deserve and only thing that's out there. So luckily I went online and I started like, like many of us do. I asked uncle Google how to (laughs) feel better, how to be positive. And uh, I found then uh, Louise Hay, and her mirror work. 
And so I'm listening to her YouTube video, this, you know, all sweet lady. She's saying, you know, go to the mirror and say, I love you. I really, really love you. And I'm sitting there watching this video on the floor, you know, like still like puffed eyes from crying. I'm like, I'm not going to even bother. I, I'm not going to go there. Like, why would I go? I don't love myself. I, I don't even like accept myself. And I'm like, oh, wow. In that moment, I realized that I want others to do for me what I wasn't doing. I'm like, that's just, it's just not going to never work. And that's where I truly realized that the power behind everything, it's unapologetic acceptance, who you are, where you are, and knowing that self-love will drive you through everything, choosing the relationship with yourself, choosing the relationship with food, with your partners in life, employees or employers. It all starts with self-love because you know what? When you truly see your worth, you stop giving discounts. That's good. That's really good. When you truly see your worth, you stop giving discounts. I love that unapologetically accepting yourself. And uh, I love what you said about if you can't love yourself, how do you expect others to love you? That's such an impactful message. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that are hurting. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we see it in the news with celebrities because they talk about ce celebrities, but we don't see it uh, outside of the news, but it's happening all the time. People are taking their lives because they feel helpless. They feel like there's nothing left for them and you were in that space and i acknowledge you for being vulnerable with us and sharing that and also having the courage to get yourself out of that space and now teach other women and other people human beings how to keep going how to persevere and love yourself first and then you create amazing things which what you what you're doing is amazing H how do you so you got out of that space you started loving yourself you stopped giving discounts <laughs> for the most part uh, <laughs> and what was the next step for you um you know i i i love how you said it like you stopped and i feel like it never stops like it's a lifelong journey it's a process it's truly not like it's just like once you learn to love yourself and also for many people who are right now in the darkest place it's most of the time it's not possible to start loving themselves like how do you want to overcome years of hating yourself and not seeing your value into okay now i love myself i'm good no you're not so where i start with my client it's accepting who they are and where they are and also if they cannot even accept it if there is so much pain and hater what i tell them it's be willing just be willing. Just say, I am willing to learn how to love myself. I am willing to take care of myself. Like I always give them this like magical question, what it would look like if you already love yourself? What would you do differently? Because even though you don't know yet, it, br it, it, it brings this like possibilities, like, oh, it's, it is really possible. So if I would really love myself, I'm not going to be stuffing myself with the ice cream and popcorn and pizza every night because I know I'm hurting myself with that. If I would really love myself, I will make sure I'm moving every single day because if I'm not moving, I keep the emotion stuck. If I would love myself, I would turn off my phone and set a healthy boundaries. If I would really love myself, I would look into the mirror and see what is and imagine what it could be. It's not like looking into the mirror and say, my ass is big or, you know, like I wish I would have broader shoulders or longer hair or no, you stop looking at yourself in a critical way. You look at yourself with the, with the eyes of possibilities. Like, how do I really want to feel? Because when you feel good, you are doing good and you attract better. It's That's really beautiful. just, 
Yeah, it's really just about accepting what is and knowing that where you're right now, it's not where you're meant to be. Yeah, and it, it brings me back to that quote. I think it was Abraham Lincoln, this too shall pass. This too oh shall pass. Yes, there is a meditation from David G that I was listening every single morning. I think it's like 17 or 18 minutes and it's called This Too Shall Pass. And it's a beautiful story about a uh, king, I think it was Solomon, that he was looking for a happiness and he was like talking with shamans and wizards and he, he wanted something that will really make him happy. And uh, one time this, um, this like, you know, wizard, he came back to him, he gave him a ring and on this ring, the set, this too shall pass. And he smiled because he knew that nothing will last forever. And that's a good thing to know. Not the good one, not the bad one. And you know, I'm so appreciative of all the abundance in my life. No, I don't have overflowing bank account with millions of dollars. No, I don't have the six pack all year long or, you know, really like, um, like, sexy ties, whatever it is. It's like, not that, you know what? I wake up every day excited about my life because I love myself. I love my life. I love my life partner. I love my clients. Like there is so much love and abundance that I do now have a reason to wake up. And that I think it's, it's the biggest gift, you know? That's beautiful, Petia. That, that, that so beautiful, so impactful. If somebody's listening to this and they're going through a hard time, really listen to what she's saying. You know, this too shall pass. N nothing lasts forever. And I believe that there is no circumstance on the outside of us that's ever going to even help us or hurt us. It's what's on the inside that counts. And that's what you're talking about. You're talking about loving yourself, take being unapologetically yourself and focusing on gratitude, doing things like meditation. I, I want to talk about meditation because I've been doing more research into it, more studying, and I've been practicing it more. And I'm really loving it. I'm having my uh, Shred Fat Mastermind members do it. Can you speak about the importance of it and then some practical ways for somebody to just get into meditation? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. For me, I uh, meditation for many years was one of those things that I should be doing because I've read it's good, you know, like it's good for you to eat like one apple a day, whatever, you know, like one of these good things that you heard. I'm like, yeah, sure. I will do it one day. So and then I hired a life and business coach. Like I think it was like three years ago and uh, he did 10 day meditation challenge and we had to meditate every single day and then record a video afterwards, just like a testimonial that like keep us accountable that we did it. So I did it day one, day two, day three. And I'm like, huh, I, I felt different. Day 10 passed and I kept going. I'm like, this is awesome. So what it really helped me with me personally was a clarity and was a focus, was um, I used to be very reactive. Like something was happening. I was like, why they're driving so fast? Are they silly or they don't see me or what is it? Like you're reacting, you know, or so you get it like, you know, like you get a text message that you didn't want to. And it's like, it would ruin my day. And now it's like, you're coming to the place that you know that nothing on the outside really matters as what's on the inside. So my clients, it's non-negotiable. They have to meditate every single day. I design for them a morning routine because morning routine, it's non-negotiable for me. I believe that how you start your day is how you will do your day. So I design it for them. And for each of them is different. I have a mom who is home, you know, and, and she has a time because her kids are already grown up. And I have a girl who is an architect that she has a full-time job and her clients on the side and she hustles. So it's, it's different. Would I always say that meditation, what it truly is for me, it's just you being with you. It's you with you. Even if you just sit and turn off your phone 
and breathe. So what you can do, it's a rhythmic breathing, you know, for like count in, you know, breath in, count to four, hold for four, breathing out for hold for four. Very easy, four, four, four. You know, you can do that four times. Another thing you can really do, what really helped me, super easy because some people like me have a monkey mind that like you keep thinking about, oh, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. What really helped me, it's focusing on words. So when I breathe in, I'm thinking the word let. And when I'm breathing out, I'm thinking the word go. Mm. So you just let and go, whatever it is for you. It can be your doubts, it can be your fears, it can be your toxic relationship. Whatever it is, you're just letting it go. Another that I really love, it's uh, just like watching a candle light flame. So it's a silent meditation and it's truly just your focus. So it's more like a contemplation, you know, because you have something to keep your mind busy. You're looking at the flame and it's really like, because you're focused on that, your mind is starting to clear up and you're just breathing and you're just there and you're just present. And I can promise you two minutes of this, it's enough. So those are like some basics that really helped me. And what I started with was to-do list meditation. I mean more. <laughs> yes, it's incredible because uh, like I said, like my mind like wants to keep creating and being busy. And I'm like, I just can't sit on my booty and don't do nothing, right? So what I did, I turned on um, like relaxing music. I love piano and I love solfeggio sounds or, so I was, I, I put a music in the background. I lay down on the floor. You can sit or lay down comfortably, take a piece of paper and your pen, close your eyes. And even if it will look like a chicken writing, you write down everything you want to do that day or anything that comes to your mind. So you basically empty your mind on the paper everything that you want to do that day. And I don't know about you, but when I start to write down the to-do list, it will have like 20 things and there is no way you can do them all. (laughs) (laughs) In one day, it's like, okay, I did my to-do list. Then you do two things that were not important at all. And you come to the end of the day and you're like, I'm busy, I'm tired, I'm frustrated. And I didn't do what I wanted to really do. So, When you finish doing this, I usually set a timer for five or 10 minutes for to do this meditation. And then you open your minds, you take a new clear sheet of paper and you really highlight on the first paper what is really important. So I read the book, The One Thing. Mm -hmm. So I ask myself, if I can do only one, max two things today, what would really make me feel accomplished? So from to-do list of 20 or 50 things or thoughts, because you will keep writing and writing and writing, you will look at that and you're like, okay, today what really matters to me is to do five sales calls or to create my landing page or to create my content for the week ahead or to create a morning routine for my new client, whatever it is, the one or two things that if nothing else will get done, if you come to the end of the day, you'll be like, okay, great. I, I, I really accomplished something. I'm good. You feel good about yourself and please don't just write it, but have that piece of paper on you. You'll forget. (laughs) Yeah. Remember to look at it throughout the day. Okay. This is my priority today. So it, it really helped me. So it was like active meditation, but it helps you clear your mind because if you don't put it on the paper, you will keep having it all in your head and that's energy wasted. That's really cool. I've never heard of that to-do list meditation. I, I love that idea. It's, it's, it's such a great solution, or I should say tool for somebody who has that monkey brain and they have all this information and they don't know which direction to go or, or which direction to start in. It's a mental dump. That's what it is. You're dumping all this information, putting it on paper. I love it. And I always tell myself this, if you think it, ink it, right? Yes, if you, if you think that's it, awesome. 
put it on paper. Don't just leave it in your head. Cause if I do, I'm going to forget it for sure. Um, that's such a great tip. I love that. I want to, I want to close this out. I want to ask you one question and then I want to acknowledge you. The one question I want to ask you is if somebody's listening to this and, uh, they're hurting right now, they're, they're just in a rock bottom space. They're depressed. They're maybe they're overweight. They have low energy levels and they don't really see the light at the end of the tunnel. They don't see any light. They just see darkness and they happen to come across this podcast and they really connected with you. What would be an actionable step for them to take today? What can they do to get them towards the right direction on living a powerful life? Mm -hmm. That's an amazing question. And, um, what I really find helpful throughout my journey was first what we just said it this too shall pass and also design your ideal life. So I'm a firm believer of journaling. And if you're right now in a space that you don't feel good, you're feeling alone and isolated and depressed maybe and you really don't feel like a way out take your journal and write down i'm so happy and grateful now that i have the love of my life in my life now that i have a income on continuous basis now that i live on the beach house surrounded with my healthy kids it's really being there because this will open up your heart and mind to possibilities. And it's not just the daydreaming, it's designing your life. So I would really suggest take your journal and just get wild. Just really write it all down. I'm feeling so amazing now in my body that I feel strong and healthy and connected and I am in the community of people who love me and get me just because of who I am, but be present in that moment and journal about it. Like even every single day, you know what? One page it's enough. It's just really opening your mind to possibilities to that. What is now really doesn't dictate of where you're going. You do. That's beautiful. I love that. Write it out. She, Petya, you're saying write it out in the present tense. Like it's, if it's already accomplished, I am so happy and grateful now that I am living a powerful life. I am so happy and grateful now that whatever it is that you want, write it out, journal it like as if it's already accomplished. And that's such a powerful tool. I, I am on board with that method and I've seen it work wonders for myself. Uh, so if you're listening and you're in that space, you know, heed into this advice. This is amazing, powerful advice. It's going to, it's going to change your life for the better. I want to, I want to acknowledge you, Petya, for uh, collaborating with me, for being vulnerable with me, not only in our one-on-one -on -one conversation, not only on our, my podcast interview on your show, which is called Be Strong Minded, but also on my podcast, this, this Health is Wealth podcast, you got, you got very vulnerable. You, you were, you're talking about your eating disorder. You're talking about being depressed. You're talking about how you were in that space and you discovered Lewis Hay and you started loving yourself. And that takes a lot of courage to share that. And I want to say thank you for sharing that. I want to say thank you for continuing to share that message. Thank you for having the courage to go from a country that you're familiar with, Europe, to, to America, which are totally new to you and creating a new life and to stepping out of your comfort zone continuously, living a powerful life, inspiring me inspiring so many people that you don't even realize. Like I'm telling you, there are so many people you are impacting that you have no idea. They're watching your stuff. They may not be commenting, and they may not even be liking your stuff, but they're reading your stuff. And I'm one of them and I'm grateful for you. And I wanna say thank you. And I also want you to share where someone could find more of your information and work with you. Mm, thank you so much. I really appreciate you and I receive it with an open heart your acknowledgement and for those who would love to you know continue to witness my journey um the best way is i really love my podcast as you mentioned to be strong-minded and i'm also very active on my instagram which is be that strong that mind that and you know like shoot me a dm or or send me a email at petia at be strong i love supporting others in keep growing you know 
I love it. I'm going to put all that into the notes so you guys could look it up. Uh, and that this was a lot of fun, Petia. Thank you so much again. Thank you. I appreciate you. And thank you for showing up. You know, the work you're doing, it's incredible and it's changing people's minds and life and bodies every single day. So I'm super excited that we connect that. Thank you. Well, there you have it. That was a powerful message. And I thank you for listening to this episode in full. If this episode and this podcast has been helpful to you and valuable to you, I would really appreciate if you left it a review, give it a rating. It'll help get this message out there. There's a lot of people who are hurting. There's a lot of people who are feeling like they are alone in this world, and they're not. Everybody is important. We all matter. And this is an important episode and an important message. So please rate the show. It'll spread this message. Share it with your friends. And have a healthy day.